mind and your full attention. So you say you deal with esoteric information? I never heard of such. Well, you're in for a treat. Blah talk, blah talk, this is a blah talk. I lean L Bay dropping jewels every day. Blah talk, blah talk, this is a blah talk. Metaphysical, we deal with the spiritual. Blah talk, blah talk, this is a blah talk. I lean L Bay dropping jewels every day. Blah talk, blah talk, this is a blah talk. Metaphysical, we deal with the spiritual. So you claim to be a god? Damn right I'm a god. The maker, the owner, cream of the planet Earth, father of civilization, god of the universe. Wow. Tune in or lose, friend. All strategies apply mathematically. The information he drop is real powerful. So get your notepad, it's more than an hour full. Watch your jaw, the crew is watching talk. Indigenous to the land, wherever we stand. First world order, we bring it at home in the first quarter. Invisible lines don't apply, we cross borders. Silly rabbit, knowledge for God. No matter where you resign, Lodge, Temple of Mars. So don't fret or proceed with hesitation. Just tune in to Blog Talk to get the information. Peace. Hey, how are you, Washington East? Good evening, everyone. Hope everything is well with you and yours and your family tonight. This is your host or co-host. Um, I'm hosting for Dr. Aleem El Bay for tonight, and this is your host um, Fahim. My new well, my I'm gonna tell you my new uh, name correction. My name is Fahim Takamcha Tunica Veteran El Bay, and I'll be your host for tonight, Dr. Aleem. And those who you were wondering what that jazz piece was, that was by the jazz band CCNS called If You Can See Me Now. All right. Uh, I'm here once again, I'm once here once again for the First World Order Radio Blog Talk Show. All right. Our topic would be to, for tonight would be the Moorish Divine National Movement and the Movement of the Nation of Islam. What is the difference? I heard uh, one brother on YouTube said that the Moorish Divine National Movement and the Nation of Islam is one and the same. Uh, that's not true, you know, but it could, but it can be. And it would be so beautiful if it was. Okay. Let me start off reading. It's called from the book, The True History of Master Fa'ad Muhammad. Allah, God in Person. By Elijah Muhammad, Messenger of Allah. Okay, this says, it, can one explain what one doesn't understand? It's called the MIMPS. This is an organization that wrote the book, uh, supposedly for the messenger. Okay, so founders explain, expands on the divine axiom given to us by the messenger that one cannot say, act, or do with reference to that which he does not have the knowledge of. Hmm. He applies the axiom to confuse and contradictory dynamics that mark the efforts of the the uninformed as to and the enemies of the truth, which God, in the person of Master Fa'at Muhammad, revealed to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. The paper trail of these dynamics is well documented. While both this offering and the subsequent, the authority to be an authority or essentially essays by Minister Hakim. He interlaces his witness bearing with the guidance and lessons from the leader and teacher. Okay, it says here the chapter, A Child is Born in Heaven, is the transcript of the very comprehensive teaching on the history of Master Fa'ad Muhammad by the messenger himself on Savior's Day, 1958. In the chapter, the Son of Man, 
the messenger we published from several sources reveals some of the hidden science and the rituals practiced in the white man's secret society, society societies known as number one masonry, number two higher masonry, and number three Muslim shriners. Many a black men and women in America have spent large sums of money joining the free and accepted, accepted Masonic Order fraternity and the female affiliate, the Order of the Eastern Star, prior to becoming a fellow of the of the Elijah Muhammad. This writer was in, in, inducted into the Blue House of Prince Hall, affiliated Masonic Order of Prince Hall, a late 18th century black man, is generally accepted as the founder of black Freemasonry in the United States. The events given rise to the acceptance are variously reported as taking place between 1775 and 1787. Chronologically, according to Masonic tradition, the charter issued by the British Grand Lodge made the Lodge Hall and his black colleagues the premier Masonic order in America, black or white. Now you notice they still use the black and white color thing to identify people. But you know, us in the Morris Divine National Movement, we don't do that. We do not identify people with colors. I'm going to get to that in a minute. Why not? Why we shouldn't, why they shouldn't. Okay. Okay, it has here. Wallace Muhammad didn't believe that Master Muhammad was Allah, which was contrary to who Elijah Muhammad had said, believed, and taught that he was. Thus, after 1975 and the bloody and the bloodless, the bloodless coup overthrow of the nation of Islam, the political evolutionaries went to work, sizing, attack dogs, and light to explain the new nation of Islam. From this time, from this same vein, came books which bear the same hypocrisy, fathered by Wallace. This frame of mind is evident in the title "From Black Muslim to Muslim." A previously mentioned, a previously mentioned, a very sly, deceptive alternative to directly refuting who Master for Art Muhammad was, was to subordinate and downplay the profundity of what of what he thought taught by putting him either in the same category with contemporaries or developing theories to establish the notion that the nation of Islam had antecedence an occurrence or event preceding another or the conditional member of a hypothetical proposition. When looking for antecedence, no attempt seems to be as difficult to prove it advanced so much as that of trying to show that the nation of Islam was a direct result of noble Juwali and Marcus Garvey, Garvey's movements. There is some evidence that all three had similarities when it came to the people of whom the movement served. However, are these similarities significant enough to serve as grounds for saying they are forerunners of each other? Emphatic, emphatically, no. Well, why not? Okay. Although the uh, the Canaanite temple was formed in 1913, the nation of Islam was not. The nation of Islam wasn't formed to 1931, or I could say 1934. Okay. Let me move on. Of this subject could be developed a point, developed point by point to substantiate the overall point. However, it is very possible and judicious to adequately examine the foundation of con- or context of the wash, which would relieve us of washing so much or wasting so much time waiting until it comes out in the rinse. Noble Juwali, founder of the Moorish American Science Temple of 1913, acknowledges. Garvey's influence on his movement. In his book, The Holy Quran 7, is replete with the teachings of Garvey. In these modern days, there come a forerunner who was divinely prepared by the great God Allah, and his name is Marcus Garvey. 
So the, it says here, the author came to this conclusion with the mere single direct quote in his 42-page book, yet to tie the nation of Islam and Elijah Muhammad into the preposition, he writes. Okay, see what he wrote. It has been suggested that Elijah Muhammad was an active member on the UNIA as well as the Ahmadiyya movement. He would he would uh, he should also note that Elijah Muhammad emphasized the writings of Mulana Muhammad Ali, the eminent Ahmadiyya scholar. Not only does Shabazz give no reference regarding a so called membership other than a suggestion that he doesn't even tell you where the suggestion came from. One would get more than that from the grapevine. He further seeks to rescue the conjecture by heaping on more conjecture by trying to associate Elijah Muhammad with the translator of the Holy Quran. When referring to the Holy Quran translation by Yusuf Ali, as well as Malala Muhammad Ali, Elijah Muhammad would compare various translations of various verses and the respective translators' commentaries. What's odd is that the Shabazz didn't include Yusuf Ali, for Elijah Muhammad emphasized his writings too, since Shabazz deems comparing the footnotes in the two translations of the Holy Quran as emphasizing that this is but another frail attempt at, at associating Elijah Muhammad with another group or person merely because their writings were comparatively analyzed. Interestingly enough, though Elijah Muhammad, in referring to Malana Muhammad Ali, he would do so far clarifying that the fact that Muhammad Ali, founder of the Ahmadiyya movement, wasn't who he claimed to be, such as the Mahdi, still in the defense of Master for Art Muhammad and his proper identity. Elijah Muhammad used this, used these people to clarify the truth and not to use them as springboards for his teachings. But in the same parable to the above short, weak premise in his assertion, Shabazz summarizes, both Noble Juwali and Elijah Muhammad were influenced by Marcus Messiah Garvey, nationalism and theology. They are merely translated it into Islamic terms. Now, those of you who uh, uh, did your research on the Nation of Islam, the Moorish Divine National Movement, uh, the Marcus Garvey Movement, no, that's a lie. If you can see the picture where uh, some of the pictures that they, uh, they have made uh, when the Prophet and uh, Marcus Messiah Garvey was around, you can see, and supposed to be, I'm not sure, some people said that is uh, Prophet Noble Abdul Ali dressed in the suit and a hat that's sitting right beside him. Some may refute that. I don't know. But you, 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 you draw on your own conclusion on that. Okay? But I'm going to give you the history of, of the Prophet Noble Abdul Ali before I get through with this here. Okay? Let me get you know, let me continue on. One writer builds this conjecture that theory atop the conjecture and theories of former writers in the purpose of explaining better than the previous writer. But one thing is overwhelmingly consistent. None of them have furnished any evidence to show that they factually know the origin of Master for Art Muhammad, nor have they produced any evidence to support that claim that either Master for Muhammad or Elijah Muhammad, his messenger, were associated in any way to the Moorish Science Movement or the Universal Negro Improvement Association. The fact that they can't explain, recently interpret, and mind you, are still puzzled as to Master for Art Muhammad's origin. It is grounds to invalidate any of their conclusions. For in the field of logic, if one's promises are incorrect and or faulty, then in any conclusion arrived that is invalid or moot to say that least 
you should expect to see many other books surfacing with the same intent of trying to subordinate Master Pahar Muhammad to a common man. Mm. This was one of the tactics used by the disbelieving, hypocritical son of Elijah Muhammad. Wallace Muhammad, history has uh, Wallace Muhammad, Elijah Muhammad's son. History has borne witness that he had convinced a great many followers of Elijah Muhammad, which could account for the great hypocrisy manifesting since 1975. Even for, even before this phenomenon, there was a great attempt at trying to discredit Master Farah Muhammad and Elijah Muhammad by Malcolm X. However, he didn't get this thing off the ground, and as history has it. He didn't have a physical man-child to carry his seed into the future, which means the future has been terminated. That's a lie, too. Even if he had 1,000 daughters, they will never produce a seed. He does not have one spiritual seed. You can recognize, you, you can recognize him by his work. If he had 1,000 daughters, they will need a seed. Because what they don't realize that the rulership comes from the matriarchy, not from the patriarchy. It's not patriarchy, it's matriarch. Okay. Let me read something, read something from the First World Order. Dealing, it actually deals with also with the uh, the history of the Washita Power Nation. Okay. Okay. Nabi Sheikh Sharif Abdul Ali, Prophet Noble Abdul Ali, the Royal Regent of the Empire Washita de Zamandia, Moors, and the Fifth Marquis de Masarouj was the founder of an old Canaanite temple in 1913, the Holy Moabite Temple of the Science of the World, 1916, and the Moors Holy Temple of Science, 1916, the Moors Divine National Movement, of the world in 1916 to 1919. During this same period, the so-called Jewish people established the Zionist movement, the Moorish Temple of Science, 1925-1926, and the Moorish Science Temple of America Incorporated, 1928. Note, in 1929, just a year later, the Vatican followed suit and formed the Papal State, being incorporated in Rome, Italy. Was a name was oh, no, I'm sorry. Family member with the uh, 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 was a family member of the Tunica, uh, some uh, uh, which was known as Turner, uh, Turner now in English, the Tunica tribe. Prophet no, uh, Prophet Noble Jawali's mother maiden name was Turner, or you can say Tunica. Her name was Alisa Turner. Before 1910, Timothy Drew, Prophet Noble Jawali's Nabi Sheikh Sharif Abdul Ali was a member of the Moorish Zion's Temple in Brooklyn, New York, founded and established in 1899 by Leon Richblue, Moorish Zionist Temple. Hence, the origin of the name Moorish Science Temple of America, uh, phonetically Zion, sounds close to the word science. Prophet Noble Jawali in 1913 moved to Newark, New Jersey, and formed the Canaanite Temple. 1913 happened to have been the same year that the Federal Reserve Bank, the Internal Revenue Service, and the Birth Certificate Department was all formed, etc. They are not mere; these are not mere coincidences. The word "co" or "co" means two. There are more than two incidents. All Moorish, Moorish, uh, the Mandia Moors do not debate on who is the rightful Khalifa, or means successor, uh, successor. There is no proof of anyone. It is all mere opinions and speculations. Whether if 
Edward Milley L., John Gibbon L., Charles Kirkman Bay, David Ford L., which was Master for Art Muhammad. Those of you in the Nation of Islam, uh, uh, if uh, there are any one member of the Nation of Islam, do you hear what I'm saying? Now, the brother in the other book just said there is no evidence of Master for Muhammad or Elijah Muhammad ever being in any of these organizations. The Moors, uh, I mean, the, uh, the uh, 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 Marcus Garvey movement or the Moors Divine National Movement. But these are, it has, these records have been thoroughly researched, thoroughly researched by Dr. Aline Mutabaki El Bay. And it's recorded and well documented. Proof that he was. I'm going to read this over again, okay? Said, uh, these are not mere coincidences. Cold means two. These are more than two incidents. All Moorish, Moorish, Dido the Monday Moors do not debate on who is the rightful Khalifa successor, meaning there is no proof of any one. It is all mere opinions and speculations, whether it's Edward Milley L., John Gibbons L., Charles Kirkman Bay, David Ford L., Master for Art Muhammad, and Dingo L., Brothers Timothy and Richardson, or etc. It does not matter, we are all Moors. By real law, birthright and nationality, blood, heritage, lineage, not by colorable law, organization, society, or tribal nation affiliation. Not by color, colorable law, okay? But they always talk about black America. The black man this, the black man that. Okay, let me move along here. Eliza Tunica or Tunica and John Andrew Kidman or uh, Kidman, as they say, is the Kitiwa term. K e e t m a n. The Kitman son, Prophet Noble Duwali, Nabi Sheikh Shubuf Abdi, Duwali, the royal regent of the Empire of Washita, D. the Damandia, continued the massive works. In 1928, common era, he went to the Pan American Conference held in Havana, Cuba. Secretary of State. Hughes went down to represent the United States, and Noah Jurali went down to represent the Moors. Now, I'm going to stop right here. CSL, he went to the Pan-American Conference, not to the Pan-African Conference. It shows clearly that he also uh, could have been a Pan-Americanist. I'm not saying he was, but that would be his right position. That would make more sense. For any brother or sister here in the North, South, Central America and the Jordan Islands to be a part of. Because truly, we would be Pan Americanists and not Pan Africanists. Why? Because we are the Aboriginal, Indigenous, Autochthonous people of the Americas. At the conference, the mandate of the landmass of the Greater Amexum, North, Central, and South America, uh, Central Amexum, Miss Norma, and the North, Central, South Americas, was returned to the Moors. Noble Drew Ali knew what this meant and what the ramifications of this was and is. You need to read the book called Exhuman of the Nation. The autobiography of Prophet Noble Juali, interest as more to land uh, to the landmass within the information land mandate in which <clears throat> in which was part of a vast express trust under the auspices of the Moorish National and Divine Movement of the World and its civic and religious corporations, 
the Moore's Holy Temple of Science of the World, Civic and Moore's Science Temple of America, religious. Remember, I am a member of the Moore's Temple of Science of the World, which is civic. The Moore's Science Temple of uh, the Moore Science Temple of America is religious. There's a, the difference between the two. Everybody must learn to understand that. The Turner's came. The Turner name is derived from the indigenous, indigenous name Tunica, and other nations. Tribes and bands came together to form the Empire of Washita, deed of the Monday of Moore, which is currently ruled under the auspices of Her Highness Empress Viriachi Tiara, Washita, Tunica, Gustin L. Bay. The following document shows Eliza Turner's, <coughs> Noble Drew Ali's mother, name is one of the persons that was on, uh, that owns portion of the Louisiana per, uh, proper land. Miss Norma, Louisiana Purchase. This can go on and on and on, but I'm just showing you some things that uh, but a lot of things they're talking about. Uh, dealing with Elijah Muhammad and Master Fahar Muhammad, saying that they were part of the, uh, the Morris Divine National Movement starting from 1913. I've just uh, read to you that they were. I, I know some of you that uh, is a member of the, uh, the Moorish Divine National Movement, and some and even the Nation of Islam. I saw the pictures of a Master for Art Muhammad and Noble Drew and, and, and uh, uh, Elijah Muhammad in the picture, standing with them on one photo that they made. There's evidence, clear evidence, that they were members. This is not to bash anyone. This is not to bash the nation of Islam. This is not to bash the most divine national movement. Because we have a lot of our shortcomings as well. For one, we have a lot of bickering amongst ourselves. As uh, in a conversation uh, Dr. Alim and I had one time, you had members from the Nation of Islam leaving the Nation of Islam and coming to the Moorish Divine National Movement. And they what they saw was a lot of disunity among the Moorish Divine National Movement as well. And people weren't together on anything. Like Brother Aleem said, that was a big turnoff for them because they were used to a lot of the military order structure that they had in the Nation of Islam. Because, see, there's a lot of things we can learn from the Nation of Islam as well. But the one thing the Nation of Islam has to learn, that there's no such man as a black man or a black woman. There's no such people uh, exist in the human family or a part of the human family. But let, let, let's tell you what. Let's take a dive in the etymology dictionary on black, on the word black. Okay, let's take a dive. Let's bear with me here. Okay, it says here, <clears throat> black, adjective. Okay, say it again, black, adjective. What is an adjective? Adjective is something that describes a noun. It describes a noun, but it's not the noun. An adjective, uh, therefore, people cannot be adjectives. That's not argumental. That's not, that's not an upper argument. That's not debatable. You learned this in third grade uh, grammar school. What 
and, and, and the difference between the adjective and a noun. I'm talking to the uh, to the members of the Nation of Islam now. And I hope and I hope I hope uh, there are members of the Nation of Islam listening to this blog talk show tonight. Listen to me very careful. Don't hang up the phone. Now. Don't get mad. Don't get into your feelings. You know, just hear me out. When you get through hearing me out, at the end of this discussion, then you come to your own conclusions. But I want you to hear me out. All right? For the rest of this lecture. 1150, in the year 1150, Black, B-L-A-C, and in place name, Blake, B-L-A-K-E, Burge, B-E-R-G-E, developed from Old English, about 700. Okay, about 700. Black, B-L-A-E-C, Black, B L. E C the old English is a cognate with old high German blah B L A H Blach B L A C H Old Icelandic Blacker B L A K K R Black B L A C C K Don colored and sometimes confused with the old English black shining O Iceland Blicker, pale, whitish. Okay, so what they're saying is, actually, you are calling yourself white man. In the origin of the word black. Is that, uh, that as far as the word can go? And then that shows right there, and that proves that our people, our ancestors, wasn't calling themselves black. You don't believe me? Get the book. Get, get the get the book. Uh, Chambers Dictionary of Etymology. Yeah, get the book. Or other books on etymology. Not just this one. And it will tell you what I just uh, read to you tonight. The same thing. Black power, there is no power in black. You said you call yourself the Asiatic. You write now. You, that, that first word is right. The Asiatic black people. Asiatic, yeah. That's 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 in the human family, but the black people is not, because there is no such people. That's just plain gramification, third grade gramification. Okay. Let's go more to the Nation of Islam teachings. Okay. This will show you the difference. That is no, that's not one and the same. It's not the same. Okay. <clears throat> the opposition, the opposition of the orthodox world. And chapter 8 is gravely needed for those who need to know how to teach the difference because not only do the Arabs oppose Elijah Muhammad, but the slave master uses this potentially device element to further isolate the black man and woman from their salvation. Muhammad, the fulfillment, Muhammad, the sign, standard equipment, for all teachers of Islam, as taught by Elijah Muhammad, it gives irrefutable truths that stands alone and can slay the most ardent hypocrite 
and enrich the most humble seek of the, seeker of the truth. Too often the Muslim followers of Elijah Muhammad do not study adequately to effectively defend the messenger in the best manner. Well, stop right here. Well, here we go. You know, you're talking about the black man and woman. First of all, you cannot defend that. It has no defense for what I just read to you uh, about a minute ago about the word black and the origins of the word black. How can you uh, or how can you defend anything that has no substance? How can you defend something that does that does not exist? Especially when it comes to law. To something being lawfully. Let me finish, let me go on. The chapter, the reality of God forces other realities mainly go mainly goes after the making it clear that what Elijah Muhammad teaches is purely for a new world. Unlike what's popular and nationally taught, Elijah Muhammad's teachings are essentially what needed to bring to a new world. He unquestionably addresses this in this book and throughout all of his writings, which is why, if you are still trying to reconcile the hypocritical mind of 1975, which was taught by Wallace Muhammad and his endorsers, then and of today, then this book will easily give it give it to you straight as it can get. You don't need to interpret what Elijah Muhammad says. He is a plain warner. The Lamb points out why Elijah Muhammad fits the prophetic description. The, the messenger eloquently supports everything he says with hard facts, which leaves the most meticulous student satisfied. Oh, really? Okay. It says here, okay, the Negro preacher, worst enemy to his people. Today, we are having one of the worst problems ever presented to the world of scholars, scientists, and even God, that this is the resurrection of the poor so-called American Negro into the knowledge of self. Now listen to this real carefully. The resurrections of the poor so-called American Negro into the knowledge of self. Now, the way it is, this, these lessons are taught, they are trying to tell someone that the word Negro in blacks is different or doesn't mean the same thing. It means exactly the same thing. Exactly the same thing, Okay. As Negro as, as Spanish for black, also Latin for black. It says here, I say to you, who owns no country, who owns no power, and no country, you are helpless. That is very, very true. You are servants of the American white people, because so-called white people, Americans. Fly for your life. Fly for your life. There must be something done about your ignorance. What should be done about your ignorance to make you or force you to come to the knowledge of God and the knowledge of yourself and your kind? I ask that question, but I will answer. Chastisement of Almighty God, Allah, is the only one now who can force you into submission to his will. And he forces everything of nature to bow to his will, willingly or unwillingly. He also will he also will make the Americans, so called Negroes, bow to his will, willingly or unwillingly, or be punished night and day with such such a grief that you cannot sleep, 
day or night. Such regret for your ignorance and rejection. I'm going to stop right here. I'm going to read this. Now listen. He also will make the American so-called Negro. Okay, now he's right when he said the word American. He's right all the way. Because the American is a derivative of Morocco. Al Morocco. Al Muruku. Al Muru. Muru. Mur. Mur. Al Muruka. Mu. M U. Well, all these words with the word more also come from. Some of these ancient terms or words. Black does not. The word B L A C K black is Middle English. So therefore that verbiage was not in usage in ancient times of our foremothers and forefathers. So we are not black and we cannot be anything else but our ancient foremothers and forefathers was not. This is coming upon the so-called American Negro who refuse to accept Islam. What you think Islam really is? What do you think it really is? I repeat, Islam is the true religion of God. It is entire submission to his will, and any people on earth or individual who doesn't bow in submission to the divine supreme being, that God will not have merely on their soul. You... Or mercy, that God. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, being that God will have uh, uh, will not have mercy on their soul. This you should know. This you 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 should have been taught, but you don't believe. This is the end of their time. It was in the end in 1914, as all religious scholars and scientists will agree. That was the end of the white man's time, and God has re- revealed to me. Don't look for the time to be extended. It has already been extended. Grace has been given to this people, the wicked world of white mankind, for now 52 years. And they are still just a wicked, just as wicked or more wicked today than they were in 1914. You got that right. But you keep on giving uh, him uh, the title and the status, white which means God, ruler of the land, still giving him that white status title. And they still, you know, teach that foolishness today. Let me, let's take a dive from the Black Law Dictionary, okay? Take a dive there. Deal with this black stuff here. How a lot of how a lot of y'all doing out there? Okay. But I hope the members of the Nation of Islam is listening, especially. And uh, a lot of us in the Morris Divine National Movement listening, those of the Great Seal, no Moors of the Round Table, Moors from different nation tribes across the Union States and across the world as well. Okay? It says here, Black Code. This is the, this is the, uh, this is the fourth edition. Uh, revised edition of the Black Law Dictionary. All right, Black Code, a name given collectively to the body of laws, statutes, and rules in force in various southern states prior to 1865, which regulated to the institution of slavery, and as particularly. Uh, though uh, biting their 
reception at public inns mm, or convenience, which is a cold. But you actually, you're talking about the black holes of 1724. How many of you know that the black, that the so-called white slave masters gave the Moors the term black? It come from the European slave masters. It was part of the third of, of the birthright theft. That's what it was part of. That was the process of stealing our birthrights by calling them Americans, by calling them American white people, which they are neither one. They're not American and they're not white. Those both erroneous, erroneously terms for the European people. Let me read this here. Says here, color and their parents semblance or similicrum or distinguished from that which is real, a prima facie or apparent right, hence a deceptive appearance, plausible, assumed exterior, concealing a lack of reality, a disguise or pretext. Mm. So when someone you so uh so when you call call your uh yourself black or call our people black people, hmm, they're not real and you're not real. So how can you defend that shit? How can you defend something that don't exist? Or people that don't exist? You know, you have a lot of um, going back to the bickering among different movements amongst our own people, and that is the um, um, the reason why we can't do anything. You know, we are success. We are successful in pockets around the world. You know, you can't see it, but a lot of us are uh, becoming a success in this movement. Uh, I can give you an example. I was in North Carolina last month, and we had a conference down there for three days, and I met an Asiatic man, meaning body of people or more, and he owned a wine vineyard. You know, that's the first time I ever seen our people as owners of a wine vineyard. And I was so amazed at it, of how much land uh, Dr. Alim's uh, princess family owned. So we was riding down a country road, riding down a country road, riding down a country road. And I said, man, this is a lot of land, Dr. Alim. Boy, this is a lot of land. Boy, I wonder who owned this land. Sister Kadira's family. I said, huh? Sister Kadira's family own all this. Listen, yes, they own all this land. When I'm talking about something that I see on YouTube or something I read in the book, this is something that I have experienced. You know, these people are doing things. They're not just talking about it. You know? Okay, I'm trying to find this page dealing with the black. Oh, here we go. Now we come to the word Negro, okay? This is the black 
Law Dictionary, Fourth Revised Edition. Okay, this is the, uh, this is in law. This is in law. Okay, Negro. The word Negro means a black man. I say it again. I'm gonna read it again. Negro. The word Negro means a black man, one descended from the African race, and does not commonly include a mulatto. Says here, Felix versus State, uh, court, uh, case 18, Alabama. Okay, but the laws of the different states are. Not uniform in this respect. Some including in the description, Negro, one who has one eighth or more of African blood. The term Negro means necessarily person of color. Hmm. But not every person of color is Negro. Okay. Person of color. I just got to read what color meant, right? So I'm going to have to go to the word person. Because so you know a person of color is given a semblance of others of the, uh, other than what is real. What you mean, they ain't real. Now let's get, let's get, to, uh, let's deal with this word person. This is in the Black Law Dictionary still, fourth edition. Person, a man considered accordingly to the to the rank he holds in society with all the right to which rights he uh uh to which the place he holds entitles him and the duties which it imposes the word in its natural and usual signification includes women as well as men he's talking about the natural person okay said the term now dealing with the with, with the unnatural person the term may include artificial beings as corporations. So you saying you are, uh, so saying you uh, are fake twice time ta- uh, uh, twice twice you saying you are a fake person according to law. This is the law. You have those in the most divine national movement. See, the thing about in the most divine national movement, everybody wants to be the chief. Everybody wants to be the man or the woman, whatever. But see, uh, uh, considering that the most divine national movement is matriarchal, and not patriarchal. But a lot of people, even brothers, have a hard time dealing with that. You know, because the sister's supposed to have three votes compared to our two. But that's understandable. Because she is the matriarch, she is the mother of all civilization. She is the first teacher. Because at one time, time, then they need the male seed to impregnate them. At one time, they, if they're in the right spiritual, um, what you could say, energy and vibrational energy, they can produce themselves don't necessarily have to uh, have a male seed to imprint them they can imprint it themselves most people would disagree me on, with me on that but let me ask you something name me one male egg on the planet of any living species on the planet earth name me one male egg or show me a male a real male. I don't mean no transvestite. I don't mean none of that shit. Show me a real male of any species, animal, human, whatever, that have ovaries. 
show me one. You can't show me one. You can't show, show me a male egg. Tell you something right there. Even the brother and I was discussing, uh, brother Coleman and I discussed it earlier today. That the clitoris of the woman's womb is an uh, 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 the, our, our phalluses is an elongated clitoris, a woman. A lot of us are gonna have a, a hard time understanding understanding that also, especially those brothers in the nation of Islam. Because they believe that the man is the primary target. No, the man is not the primary target. The man is not the main target. Our women's are. Because she's the nation. I had one sister tell me in the Moorish Divine National Movement, you're not a grand sheep. You're not even a chief. You're not this, you're not that. Okay. Okay. What I, I wasn't thinking at the time, but what I should have told her, well, in that case then, you know, uh, since the woman is all this, therefore when you won't find no decent women, you, you will never find a decent man. Can't have it both ways now. There's no third way. I mean, you got some, some, you, every sister in the most divine national movement is not like the empress. Some of you brothers think you're going to find in the most divine national movement, everybody is like the empress. Every woman is like the empress, I should say. And you will find some women like the empress. You can find some of the beautiful sisters in the Moorish Divine National Movement, like you can find some of the beautiful sisters in the Nation of Islam. But no, brother, every every woman in the Moorish Divine National Movement, like the, like, like the Empress Veriachi, Tiari, Washita, Tunica, Gustin L. Bay. I'm sorry. But you cannot build a nation like that. You cannot. Uh, you cannot um, uh, say following humanity like that. Not by tell one gender telling the other, "I'm better than you. I'm more than this. You are nothing." That's not how you teach. Some people say, "Well, that's how I teach." Well, but that's not how you teach. There's something, I got some, a lot of Moors always want to bash Christians, you know. But I can tell you from my own experience, a lot of these Christians, or Moriscos, as some of us want to call them, Christian Moors, you want to call them, they are some of the beautiful people in the world. Some of the beautiful people in the world. And I can tell you right now, uh, some people in my own family are the beautiful people in the world because they are Christians. I met some of the beautiful people, Christians in the world uh, when I uh, went down North Carolina in North Carolina last month for the conference. Well, I went down there for th- three days, but I was I stayed an extra two days days because I was under the little bit under the weather. But they took care of me. I received some of the best hospitality that I have seen in a very, very, very long time. On the hospitality that I that I wouldn't couldn't even get 
from a lot of the Moors, or I mean, or so say Muslims or Muslims, even in the Moors divine national national movement, or in the Nation of Islam, from neither one of them. And some of these uh, Christians, I'm gonna tell you, I'm talking these Christians, I'm talking about. Hey, a lot of their families have never been slaves. Never been slaves. They are very, very, very self-sufficient. I have great admiration for them. Even in your churches as well, you have, which is most of our people are members of, of the church. But a lot of them are well more organized than the Nation of Islam and the most divine national movement. A lot of you, am I lying? Can you dispute that? No, you cannot. We're dealing with Moriscos, whom we call Christian Moors. I'm going to read some from this book, uh, from Abdullah Bay's book, Moors and Masonry. I'm going to read some from this book. And it's dealing with uh, one of the Moors, one of the slaves, the Europeans, and the Europeans enslaved us also. But I'm going to read you uh, some uh, information from this book showing you uh, what I'm talking about here. Okay. To aggravate this... Hold up. Hold up. Let me see here. It has here from Stanley Lane Poole and J.T. Kelly Barbary Cazares, newly, newly titled Moors after Spain. Fortified by a series of unbroken success, Kair Adin at last ventured to attack the Spaniard garrison, which had all so this time affronted him at the Pinon de Alger. It was provoking to be obliged to beat his gallows gallows a mile to the west and to drag them painfully up to the strand and the uh, merchantmen moored east of the city were exposed to the weather to such a degree and as to imperil their commerce. Kerar Edin resolved to have port part of his own at Algiers with no Spanish bridle to curb him. He summoned Don Martin de Vargas to surrender, but he was a Spaniard, and on on his refusal bombarded him. The opinion day and night after uh, uh, for fourteen days and nights with heavy cannon, partly founded in Algiers, partly seized from a French galleon, till an assault was uh, practicable, uh, practicable when the feeble remnant of this garrison was quickly overpowered and sent to the uh, the bagnels. The stones of the fortress were used to build the great. Mole, which protects Algiers Harbor on the west, and for the two whole years the Christian slaves were laboriously employed upon the work. Now, bear me out now, bear me out here. Some people say, Well, why is he reading us that? You know, why is Fahim doing that? Hold on, just wear on, just be patient. Hold on. To aggravate this disaster, a carnage, a, a, a carious Sight was seen at a fortnight after the fall of the Pinion. Nine transports full of men and ammunition for the reinforcements of the garrison have in sight and long they searched to and fro for the well-known fortress they had come to secure. And whilst they marveled that they would could not discover it, out dashed the Cazares. The Cazares, that's Moors. 
the new title they have for us, okay, in those days. And the Goliath and Light Shebex and seized the whole convoy together with 2,700 captives and a fine store of arms and provisions. Everything that Ka'ar Adin took in, in hand seemed to prosper. His fleet increased month by month till he had 36 of his own galleots, particularly on the cruise and on the summer season. His prizes were innumerable, and his forces were increased by the fighting men of 70,000 Moriscos. 70,000 Moriscos. 70,000 Christian Moors. Meaning that they went to rescue these Christian Moors. They rescued them. See, they even had, they still had love for their sisters and brothers, brother Moors, even if they were Christians. And that's where we got to be today. I'm through with that, but that's why I wanted to read that and share that with you all this night, you know. And try to tell you that, hey, that's the way we should both be. We ain't supposed to be bashing each other like that. Putting each other down. You got brothers and sisters out here bashing about uh, certain brothers uh, selling packages and certain sisters selling packages. Well, hell, how in the hell they going to uh, fill out your uh, nationality papers if they don't have the ink and the bonded paper. Do you know how much money bonded paper costs? Do you have do you have any idea how much that ink costs? A printing machine? A printing machine? You paying for that labor, fool? I bet you I bet you I bet you that I bet you that European tell you uh, about them cars you be buying, them clothes you be buying, the three hundred, four hundred, hundred dollar Nikes, whatever, or Air Jordans. You ain't gonna tell a European, oh man, I gotta pay this now. You wanna go ahead and pay it? Cause you wanna look good. You wanna pay them? You wanna pay them thousand, whatever, some dollar the car notes. Every month, but this is here to pay for your nationality, labor of your nationality, to work on your uh, about your nationality papers, for them to work on your nationality papers. That's just a one-time thing, once in a lifetime. You have to pay for your nationality papers to be done once in a lifetime. Boy, a car note, you you got to pay. So many, I don't know how many hundreds of dollars or uh, thousand dollars every month. And I don't hear you complain about that. A lot of you, like a lot of you are bullshit people. And I'm so sick of bullshit people, I don't know what to do. both in the Moors, Divine National Movement, and the Nation of Islam. Of course, you've got a lot of those in the church, too. But we, what I'm saying is we all can learn from each other. We all, you know, if, 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 man, wouldn't that be a sight? I heard one time that uh, uh, Mr. Farrakhan told one brother, one of the uh, he, he was from the Moors, uh, one of those Moors temples, science temples in Chicago, and he was there to visit, you know, the Marianne Mosque in Chicago. And Mr. Far, uh, Farrakhan told him, he said, "Brother, uh, it's not that fast that this no, I'm saying in the words that this white man is afraid of is that black face." 
that he's afraid of. And I'm like, "Uh -uh. uh-uh. Uh-uh. No disrespect. Khan, I love that brother. That brother has done a superb job in the resurgence of the Nation of Islam. Uh, And I thank her, Allah, for him being in our midst today. Did you hear me? Did you hear me, everybody that's listening to this show tonight? And I thank her a lot, or Allah, for bringing him such a man amongst our midst. Because Allah is woman, not man. Now, those of you in the nation of Islam, I hope, hope you especially hope you all listening to this, to this show tonight. Okay? But I, I, I say again, I respect this man, you know, but he was wrong for telling that brother that. And what I mean is that it's not the black face. They've never been as, uh, been as uh, afraid of of the so-called black face. No. On the continent, no, brother. They are afraid of the face he's wearing on his head because that shows the European that we are waking up. I tell you what. And this is to Mr. Farrakhan and every other brother minister, imam, and all the nation of Islamic mosques across the Union States, and across the world, Jamaica, England, and elsewhere. If Minister Farrakhan pass out an order for all the FOI, the MGT, and the GCC to start wearing turbans and fezes, if he said said to give the order out for every member of the Nation of Islam, I want y'all to start wearing the red fezes and the FOI start wearing the black fezes and the sisters start wearing white fezes and turbans. Our brothers wearing turbans. And just see what kind of reaction you will get. Not just from Europeans, but from our own Asiatic people as well. Because you will never know unless you tried it. If you have never tried it, tell me it don't work. You can't tell me they're not worried about you wearing a fast or a turban on your head. You're not qualified to tell me that. Because you've never tried it. It's never been tried. But far as my concern... That would be a very, very, very beautiful sight. That the most divine national movement in the nation of Islam can come together, even in the Christian churches. All can come together, but one thing that stands in our way to y'all want to be black. The rest of y'all want to be adjectives. And people are not adjectives. You cannot build on, we cannot build on anything together. If you, if you think you don't exist, which is an adjective, if you want to keep on giving, giving an appearance of other something that, of what is real, a lot of the nation of Islam, uh, I don't know, uh, some of them have farm, farmlands. I don't know if they still have many farmland areas as it, as it was as when I was a member. When I was a member, my name was Robert, Brother Robert 6X in the St. Louis, Missouri Territory. On that one, Brother Robert 6X. I was the 6th Robert 
in that territory to receive his ex. And in those days, they were giving out exes then, not Muhammad's. Today, they're giving out Muhammad's. You've got to learn. I'm, 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 this is a message to the nation of Islam. I'm talking to y'all. You have to learn. You have to learn civics. You must know civics. You must know law. Come out of those 501c3 conditions that you're in. You have to land. Uh, some, some of you that still have farmland areas, you need to, uh, to acquire a lodium titles to that land. Lodium title means free land. Free land. All the Muhammad Mosses around the country and around the world, you need to have a 508 instead of the 501c3. You have to start calling yourselves Aborigine Indigenous Americans or Moors or Moroccans or Autonomous people. That's why the Nation of Islam cannot get recognized or uh, recognition from the United Nations because Islam is a religious creed, not a nationality. No such people in any part of the human family. Therefore, you do not exist. Therefore, you will never be recognized among the family of nations. I hope there's someone, a member of the Nation of Islam, listening to this uh, lecture tonight. And I always say, I don't mean to insult anyone. I always mean to ed- educate what little bit I know. Because I don't know that much. And I'll never tell anyone that I'm an all-knower. No, I'm, I'm far, far, far too smart for that. To say something stupid like that. But I will try to tell you what I do know and what I have learned, and I will share it with my Asiatic brothers and sisters. But those of you who are members of the Nation of Islam, think on that. Think on it. You already have the military order structure. Which I wish we had in the more divine national movement. We've got a lot of our people that want to first get nationalized. They want to say, "Oh, uh, what kind of benefits can I get from that? Uh, uh, do you have any benefits? Uh, what's that going to do for me? Am I going to lose any benefits? You know, I know because I was one of them." See, I'm talking about myself, too. And Dr. Arlene can bear witness to this. Uh, when I first got nationalized, I asked Dr. Arlene, I said, Dr. Arlene, you know, uh, uh, would, that mess with, would that mess with my benefits? He said, no. Well, Dr. Arlene, uh, I'm drawing uh, disability. Would that mess with my disability? He said, no. Not whatsoever. See, I'm not pretending that I'm perfect, perfect, because I'm not. Far, 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 far from it. So I'm guilty of some of that mess myself. See, I want to include myself, because I'm part of all of you. You are my people. But now, over the years, since I learned so much of that little bit I know, man, I, I, I'm, I'm mad at myself because I, uh, uh, that I didn't uh, get my nationality earlier.
There's nothing to be afraid of of being nationalized. Nothing at all. It would be a whole lot, a whole lot, a whole lot better for you if you do get nationalized. I'll tell you that from the way things are going in this country and around the world because nationality is the order of the day. You are the nation of Islam. Nationality is order of the day. Black is not an identity. Black is not a nationality. Islam is not a nationality. You cannot be free on those principles. Or I can say artificial principles. Tell you something. Show me your nation Islamic constitution. Show you, show me, uh, uh, talk, talk to me, or tell me what your nation of Islam language that you speak. Show me the nation of Islam flag. I'm not talking about that Turkish flag that you're flying. And by the way, the ancient Turks were Moors. For those of you that are always talking about Bay comes from Turkey, or it's a Turkish term, well, the ancient Turks were Moors. So I silenced that shit right there. The Turks, uh, some of them don't even know that they are, they are amalgamated Moors. Or uh, some may say Tony Moors. Some of the brothers may say, "Yeah, uh, uh, a lot of them wearing the fez. A lot of the uh, Shriners and so forth are wearing those. Those those they they're wearing the fezes. Well, they were wearing them so much because we are not wearing them. We won't step up to the plate." What you put down, your enemies pick up. Thing that the nation of Islam is doing is some great things. They have even doctors, people going to the school of medicine to learn how to be doctors and physicians. Agriculturists to learn how to farm. Missing one thing, nationality. A Moor is a person that's tied to the land. That's what a Moor is. She or he is tied to the land. Black ties you to nothing. Nothing. There is no connection. Aborigine meaning the very first inhabitants or aboriginal the first the very first original people. Some people say original, nothing wrong with that. But there's nothing wrong with the very first original either. Indigenous meaning native of the land, natural to the land. Any living species of any land or country that is natural to that land or that country that is an indigenous woman or man, the aboriginal indigenous people, a toxinous, meaning those who spring uh, forth from the soil of the earth. Aboriginal, indigenous, a toxinous, all those words, that's what a boar is. That's a boar. When I say some of you, I say, like I say, uh, the Aboriginal Indigenous American, 
or the Aborigine Indigenous American neighborhood. That's what I would say, instead of the African American neighborhood. For one thing, we are not Africans. Yeah, we are African descent, but we are not Africans. If you don't have a direct lineage to any, any of the countries in Africa, you are not an African. Our family, all of our family lineages, link back, I don't, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of years in the North, North uh, Central and South Americas and adjoining islands. We don't go by because we were the first inhabitants here. Darlene was reading to us uh, in a law class one night. He was saying that uh, we was here before the first Africans came across the Atlantic and settled here. Because this, this, this land, the North Central South American and Joint Islands is an, is an extension from the Songhai and Mali empires. An extension. That was well over, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands, even to the millions of years ago. But all this was connected at one time. I'm talking about everybody talking about they go on to Africa. Well, you just you left Africa. This was all connected before the Great Drift, known as Pangaea. Okay, some of the. Uh, there's some of you talking about the Holy Quran and the Nation of Islam, from the Quran, one none but a uh, plagiarization uh, 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 that Noble Drew uh, Ali wrote, but he never really said he wrote that book. Never really he sold, uh, wrote. He never he never said he wrote the Holy Quran, Circle Seven. Here's what it says here in the Holy Quran, Circle 7. The Holy Quran. Okay, what does the Holy Quran mean? Define Holy Quran. Define Holy Bible. I say to you Christians, I mean Helios, Biblios. Helios meaning the sun. Biblios meaning books of the sun. Define Holy Quran. Muslims of the Nation of Islam, define the Holy Quran. Okay, the Holy, meaning Son, Quran, meaning Chronicles, meaning records of history. Define in the Moorish Divine National Movement and in the Moorish Temples, define the Holy Quran, Circle 7. Knowing holy means son, Quran means what? Or you can say it in the letters, Quranicles as well, but Quran K means knowledge. The O means order. R means radius. The A means arithmetic. The N means network. These are some of the things we must know. I don't know uh, the Holy Quran, Circle 7, verbatim. I sure don't. But I can tell you a lot of these, a lot of this, what I read, the allegory, and uh, what it says in uh, uh, Dr. Eileen's book, The First World Order, it says in the esoteric book. And it's an allegory book, not to be taken in a literal sense but in an allegorical sense.
And this is where a lot of our people go wrong at. Like I heard one sister on YouTube, she said that, I don't see, a lot of that stuff don't make sense to me. A lot of that stuff comes from the Bible. A lot, a lot of it does come from the Bible and other sources. That's why I don't read the Circle 7. Okay. And if that sister listening tonight at this show, she knows I'm talking about her. I'm not going to say her name, but but you know who I'm talking about. You know who you are. Oh, by the way, my phone number is area code 314-644-4425. I repeat, my phone number is 314-644-4425. Okay. You want to say something about it? Give me a call. And I might can learn something from a lot of you. Because like I say, I'm not an all-knower. In a discussion, I could learn a lot from you. Sisters and brothers alike. Muslim, Muslims, and Christians alike. It says here, it says here, divinely prepared by the noble prophet Drew Ali. Divinely prepared. As me and Brother Dr. Aline was discussed one night, it means divinely prepared. Just like I prepared my dinner this evening. Uh, I had brown rice mixed with mixed vegetables. And I had salmon on top of it. Salmon fish. I didn't make the salmon. I didn't make the mixed vegetables. I didn't create or make the rice. They were compiled. Divinely prepared. <laughs> By me. Get it? A lot of people, the Bible and the Holy Quran, like, no, as, uh, they're not esoteric books. They are most, uh, they are books that are supposed to be literally understood. No, but they're all science books. They are all science books, including, including the Holy Quran, Muslims in the Nation of Islam. Now, I'm going to give you the example of what I'm talking about. Okay. Give you an example of what I'm talking about here. I'm going to read from the Yusuf, Yusuf Ali translation of the Holy Quran. Okay. It says here in section 3, paragraph 30 of the Surah 21, al Abiya. Says in the thirtieth verse, do not, do not the unbelievers see that the heavens and the earth, meaning spiritual and matter, okay, that's what that means. The heavens and the earth were joined together as one unit of creation. Before we clothed them asunder, we made from water emotions, uh, and also mean energy. Every living thing, will they not then believe? Okay, let me read from another. Says here, and I'll, I'm on, Surah 6, 75 verse. So all did so. So so also did we show Abraham the power and the laws of the heavens and the earth, still spiritual and earth, the spiritual and material and and matter, spirit and matter, or spirit matter, that he might with understand how certitude seventy six when the night 
covered him over. That means <clears throat> the sun is in sunset. He saw a star, Venus, the light bearer. Some people refer as Lucifer. He said, "This is my Lord." But when I, when, but when it set, he said, "I love not those that set." He's talking about the sunset. Verse 77, and when he saw the moon rising in splendor, he said, This is my Lord. But when the moon set, he said, Unless my Lord guide me, I shall surely be among those who go astray. Now he can dwell in the darkness. They said in the circle seven Quran, they love the dark. But when they see the light, they comprehend it not. Let me go on. Verse 78 in the Holy Quran. When he, when he saw the sun rising in splendor, he said, This is my Lord. You're dealing with everything. I'm going to stop right here. You're dealing with everything, not only uh, <clears throat> with uh, metaphysics, but you're dealing also with astrology and astronomical science and cosmology. It's all through the Holy Bible, all through the Holy Quran, whether it's by the Yusuf Ali or the Malana Muhammad Ali versions, whatever version of the Bible. You're dealing with cosmology. I'm going to go on, okay? It says here, I'm going to start all over again. When he saw the sun rising in splendor, he said, This is my Lord. This is the greater of all. But when when the sun set, he said, "Oh, my people, I am, I am indeed free from you from your guilt of giving partners to Allah." Light represents divinity, all that is good, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. They said, "This is the greater of all." He said, uh, I am free from your guilt. Okay, when he said, uh, <clears throat> this is the greatest of all, but when the sun set, that means getting ready to get dark again. When the sun set, he said, oh, my people, I am indeed free from your guilt of giving partners to Allah. Verse 79, for me, I have set my face firmly and truly towards him who created the heavens and the earth, and never shall I give partners to Allah. But what they don't but what they don't don't know is Allah is within them. Allah is within each and one of us, the higher self. They always deal even the holy Quran of the Muslim that deals with the higher and lower self. Because our lower self is the devil. Our lower, de- our lower self is Satan. Or set. Because when the sun sets, then you have the prince of darkness. We'll go on to the next. Okay. This is Surah 20, 21, the al Ambiya, verse section 3, verse 30. Do not, unbelievers, see the heavens and the earth. Where John, oh, I saw, oh, okay, I'm sorry, I read this before. Okay, I'm going to read this part here, uh, verse 33. It is he who created the night and the day, dealing with darkness and night and, and light. And the sun and the moon and all the celestial bodies swim along each in its rounded course. How many of you saw uh, the movie, the old movie, kind of an old movie now, is dealing with uh, the Masonic Order. Uh, the name of the movie was called, um, hmm. oh boy, it's dealing with the so uh, Jack the Ripper. 
But anyway, if you notice, uh, the actor when Johnny Depp died at the end of the movie, they put two quarters in his eye sockets. That's dealing with the sun and moon. Dealing with light and day, light and darkness. Or some people may say the law of opposites. And I'm come to this here. It says there, section two of Surah forty one Fusilat. Okay. Say it is it say is it that ye deny him who created the earth in two days and to ye join equals with him. He is the Lord of all the worlds. Verse 10, he sat on the earth, standing firm, high above it, and bestowed blessings on the earth and measured therein all things to give them nourishment to the proportion in four days, balance, or foundation, in accordance with the needs of those who seek sustenance. That means material sustenance. Moreover, he comprehended in his desire the sky, and it had been as smoke, as he said to it, and to the earth. Come ye together, whether this willingly or unwillingly, they said, we do come together in willing obedience. And here it is, here it is uh, verse 12. So he completed them as seven firmaments in two days. They always deal with the seven. Always. Especially in the Holy Bible. The number seven. Because that is the true circle seven. The seven is the perfect number of the perfect man. We have four gates of the circle seven. The four gates represents each of the four seasons of the year. Between the four gates, it represents north, east, west, south, which the word news come from. And there you have the seven in the center, the perfect man. But this is before a lot of people listen to so-called scholars in the nation of Islam uh, beating down the Holy Prophet in this book, Circle 7. You should have listened to this uh, lecture tonight. And that ought to give you a different perspective. You know, know what the hell you're talking about. If you can't define me the name of the book, if you can't, then, then what, what are you talking about? A lot of you do not understand uh, uh, ceramics or semantics. Now, I'm going to read something here from uh, Arlene's book, The First World Order. God versus Sanford. Decision was supposedly superseded by another decision name. The, the slaughterhouse case, and eventually by the 14th Amendment, which was never properly ratified, okay? Now, they explained to you in the, la uh, the la uh, last week's discussion. However, this is not true. The slaughterhouse case simply provided safeguards, and the 14th Amendment was never fully ratified. Hence, leaving us to, in limbo once again, or rather, back to square one about our citizenship. How are we not citizens in our own land? Good question. Note, the Constitution for the United States of America, the Constitution of the United States of America and the U.S. Constitution all have been hijacked in the supreme law of the land and the UCC, Uniform Commercial Code, not 
superseded. The, use of, the Uniforms uh, Commercial Code is Admiralty Maritime Law, which ultimately leads to colorable law or color of law, meaning the appearance or semblance without the substance or legal right. State versus breacher. breacher. The joint resolution proposing said amendments are not submitted or or uh, two are adopted by a constant Congress by Article One, Section Three, and Article Five of the U.S. Constitution. It was never submitted to the President for his approval, as required by Article One, Section Seven of the U.S. Constitution. The proposed Fourteenth Amendment was rejected by more than one fourth of all of the states then in the Union, and it was never ratified by three fourths of all of the states in the Union, as required by Article 5 of the U.S. Constitution. Fifteen states out of ten, 37 states of the Union rejected the proposed 14th Amendment between the date of its submission to the states by the Secretary of the State on June 16, 1866, and March 24, 1868, thereby further nullifying said resolution and making it impossible for its ratification by the constitutionally required three-fourths of such states. Okay, get that? You cannot reclaim yourself as a nation, nation of Islam, and then you want to claim, uh, declare, you want to claim constitutional rights. You call them uh, so-called white Americans, which is both are erroneous statements. They are, they are not neither of the two. They are not Americans, and they are not white. Let me, let's me let take a dive. They're getting ready to cut me off soon, but I'm going to take a dive into the... Let's take a dive into a Northwestern Dictionary, 1828 edition. Right quick here. Let's get ahead right quick. Okay, American, a native of America, originally applied to the aboriginals or copper-colored races found here by the Europeans, but applied to the descendants of European born, Europeans born in America. Did you hear that? The copper-colored races. Are they copper-colored or are we copper-colored? Hmm? I'm going to leave that question with you. If you're getting ready to cut me off, I wish I had more time to talk to you. I hope, like I said, I hope the, I, I have educated a lot of you, have enlightened you on a lot of things I said. You know, I say I wish to educate, not to insult anyone. All right, until next week or the next Wednesday. The same blog talk, uh, day, uh, even the same blog talk station. So long. I have to tell you, East, and Bawasa Matakunda, meaning peace family. I'm out. <laughs>